for all the people on the interwebs. That's going to go on there now. Um, so this is our last panel, and in this particular panel, we are getting some information from people who have just recently gotten um, their jobs out of either from undergraduate or graduate school. And what they're going to do is they're just going to kind of give some advice for some of you that are maybe trying to go through the same process in life. So uh, I'll let Kelly start on the end here. Uh, hi, I'm Kelly Shields. I'm a recent graduate from US, yeah, like two years, it's fine. Uh, graduate from UST, I double majored in biology and environmental science, and I'm currently a GIS specialist at SWCA and consulting a environmental consulting company in Houston. Cool. Um, my name is Anna Valerie. I'm a conservation specialist at Houston Audubon. Um, I graduated in May with my master's in science and environmental science and biology from the University of Houston Clear Lake. Um, yeah, my job is conservation specialist kind of is a catch-all, so I run our native plant nursery, I work with our bird-friendly communities program, and I do a little bit of research, and then I help with anything else that comes up in the nonprofit world. Okay, hi, I'm Cassidy Kemp. Um, I'm a natural resource specialist at Houston, or Houston Arboretum. You said I'm Audubon. Sorry, it happens. The two, <laughs> they're, they get confused. Um, the Arboretum and Nature Center. Um, I graduated from Rice, in 2017 with a double major in ecology and evolutionary biology and policy studies. Um, yes, that's all my information, I think. <laughs> can, can each of you give a little bit more discussion? I think Anna, you did an okay job. Me, but <laughs> Kelly and Cassie, definitely explain what you do with your jobs, right? Like, help us understand what like a GIS specialist is or like a natural resource specialist. Yep. Uh, so GIS specialist just means that I just run GIS, which is a mapping software, uh, all day. It's we are we have field crews that go out and gather data in the field, and there'll be data points. So they'll send that data back to me, and then I'll process it, make sure everything's in the right projection, the maps look pretty. I draw the polygon shapes to all the points and say this is a wetland this is not and then I do calculations on that and I send those calculations back to them so they can complete their reports um, so I'm on the conservation team at the Arboretum so we have kind of like an education team and a conservation team so um, we uh, just do the habitat restoration and kind of ecosystem <coughs> management of the 155 acres so mm -hmm. we a lot of what we're doing is restoration from degraded woodlands into savanna or into prairie um, so a lot of invasive species removal and native plant propagation we have a little nursery too at the arboretum and um, i also do our research programs so every summer we do vegetation surveys throughout the arboretum and um, it's kind of a long extended study um, and then we also try to pair it with pollinator data. So that's what I'll be doing this summer with interns that we just posted. So <laughs> um, that's kind of what we do on the conservation team. So the topic of our panel is, is basically, I got the job, now I'm about to give you some advice, right? So <laughs> can, you, can you give us any advice that you've come across? Um, since you graduated that you kind of wish you would have known when you were in college? Um, networking's pretty big thing, at least getting job-wise with, I can't say nationwide uh, how it is, but in Houston at least, the environmental community is like really small. So if you don't know someone, you probably know someone who knows someone. So it's just nice getting out, meeting people, and just talking with people about what they do. So people are usually pretty nice about what they work. Um, so it's cool seeing other places and learning new things. And usually if an opportunity comes up, if they're friends, they'll let you know. So that's nice. Yeah, and on that note, um, as an uh, almost graduate, uh, take all opportunities you have to go to, um, like to present um, or to go to these kinds of events um, because that's I, how I got my job. I had applied and then met my current boss at a um, Waterbird Society meeting 
um, when I was presenting. So that's how you kind of figure out who is doing what you're interested in mm -hmm. and then um, getting a job that you really like. Yeah, and I think just kind of being vocal about where you are in your career search and what you want um, to people that you know, especially like teachers and things like that, um, even if they don't specifically ask you, it's good to tell <laughs> everyone, hey, I'm looking for a job, this is what my interests are, because you never know who they know, so I think that's important. Yeah, if you have like really nice teachers or uh, good mentors, at your school, definitely don't not like take advantage of them, but I'm not not that, but like <laughs> talk with them, because if they're interested in helping you out, they probably know more stuff than you do. So if they might be like, hey, they're not hiring, but these folks are doing what you're doing, so maybe you can go to their class for one day, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Anna, you mentioned that you got your job by meeting your boss through a meet, a, a, was it a professional society? Yeah. So when did you join that professional society? And then the, the other two up there, have you joined one or have you thought about joining professional societies related to your work? So um, I guess I hadn't really joined the professional society. They called for abstracts um, and my research was on water birds. Um, so I went ahead and submitted an abstract and presented at the um, society meeting. And uh, I had recently, like a week before, applied for my job that I have now and met my boss there. Um, and I was like, hey, I applied, wanted to introduce myself. Um, he was interested in my research. I was interested in kind of the, the Waterbird stuff going on through Houston Audubon. Um, and so it all just worked out really well. Um, but like Kelly said, it is a very small community. So if like, in my case, if you're interested in birds in Houston, you meet somebody who's also interested in birds in Houston, they know all the other people doing bird stuff in Houston. Um, and I think that's the case for fisheries as well, because I, in my master's program, I worked a lot with fisheries scientists. It's very similar. Once you meet one person doing coastal fisheries or inland fisheries, uh, you know them all. Uh, it's a small community, which is great. Um. Professional, I, I, I'm in the Young Professional Advisory Council for Audubon. Yeah. Um, I got that after this job, so I, I wouldn't say it helped me get a job, but um, it's nice to meet other people doing similar things to you and younger people because a lot of environmental organizations are small. So then also the number of people at your organization who are your age is really small. So it's good to meet other people our same age doing the same thing. I'm on the board of the Houston chapter of the Native Prairies Association of Texas. It's a nonprofit, so it's not, I guess, professional. Um, for nonprofit wise, I can't say if it helped me get my job, but it definitely showed that I was interested in the field. And it was, it's for me personally, it's just nice meeting other people and uh, Native Prairies is all about conserving and promoting Native Prairie, so it's important to me. Um, and it's, uh, if you're joining a nonprofit, basically all you need is attitude to join the nonprofit because <laughs> they're just like, oh, you want to do work for free? Great! <laughs> so you can just, they'll be happy if you jump in. So, yeah. Each one of you have a very different job right now. Is this the job or the career that you want for the rest of your life? I can go. Yo, okay. Oh. So, um, my background is uh, coastal avian ecology, and I love coastal avian ecology. And so, when I met my boss, um, my current position doing prairie stuff um, and a lot more like urban ecology is not exactly what I always pictured myself doing. Um, and in my interview, I was very vocal about that. Um, I was worried to my detriment, uh, but I think that both of my supervisors appreciated my candor in expressing that because they were like, well, why did you apply for this job? And I was like, well, it's adjacent to the field that I want and I'm about to graduate and I'm applying for anything and everything that's adjacent to what I want to do. Um, and because I have was always vocal about this, um, my supervisor makes sure to include me on the projects that I'm actually interested in. So in my job description, there was no 
coastal avian research at all. But because I was vocal in this, um, I'm getting to work on all of our coastal avian research um, and develop my own studies through Houston Audubon um, because I'm interested in it and I have that kind of passion. And in the future, I will hopefully move back towards coastal avian ecology and I'd like to go back and get another um, degree regarding it, of course. Um, and so he's so supportive of that and it's kind of changed what was this outlined kind of set in stone position into something that I'm much more excited to do. And I'm along the way, I'm learning more about prairie ecosystems, which is awesome. And I'm learning more about urban conservation and I'm learning more about um, like songbirds and everything. Mm. So it pushed me outside of what I wanted to do, which is great because I think it's making me, me a more rounded scientist and a more rounded conservation um, professional. Um. Yeah, I have a similar, I had a similar, when I graduated, I got a job doing grant management. And when I accepted that job, it was also adjacent um, to what I wanted to do. And through doing that job, I met a lot of people and I still, I went to a lot of trainings, still learned a lot, and then was eventually moved, moved into what I am now, which was the thing that I originally wanted. Um, so the adjacent thing wasn't too bad. Yeah, adjacent works. <laughs> it's uh, when I graduated, actually the job that I like, you know, dream job that I imagined was actually like your job description. It's uh, doing all that stuff. Like I never imagined I'd be doing GIS. And like when I started, I was just like, <sighs> <laughs> but I actually uh, working on it now, definitely it's been pretty great that stability is really important to me so it's given me that great paycheck great company and SWCA gives you scientists the opportunity to do their own independent research at the company which is really great for them so I could continue doing go down that path if I wanted so I'd like to stay with the company that I'm at right now definitely yeah. any questions from any of the people in the audience I had a question on the GIS there. So, well, as you were telling me, you took you had two you took two core GIS courses in co college, and mm -hmm. now and now um, you're work you're working for her, Sw Swaka and mm -hmm. Duhing being a GIS special specialist. Uh, um, I guess what was the difference between working working in a company and doing GIS and hence just doing the co coursework because the concept of GIS for me I enjoy I enjoy it but some of the core some of the coursework the professor the professor would have would assign him can be a little bit fr frustrating mm -hmm. and that not because of the whole professor's fault but just like hey working with working with how arc map can be a little bit temperamental if you know. oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's I actually I I wasn't I was excited for a job but starting it I wasn't that excited because I hated ArcGIS in school. It was a lot of late nights crying at the computer late. It was just everything dark and just me staring at the glare. It was horrible. But company, not like that. It's, really, it's completely different working it than doing the coursework. It's, for one thing, if people have done it before you, there's a set path for you to do. It's not, okay, do this tedious step. 30 times. I, I mean, yeah, you'll have to do it, but it's different. You're actually getting a product out of it. You're not answering the question. And uh, a lot of it, it's also, it really helps if you have a company that has like the server power <laughs> to handle it, because a lot of college courses don't, which is why it would always crash before you <laughs> saved and lost hours of work. But at a company, no, they pay for it. So yeah, you can oh, hey, it doesn't take me four hours to export it. It just took me 30 minutes. That's fantastic. <laughs> On the GIS note, uh, I recommend everybody take a GIS course. Um, I took two or three GIS courses, um, and it's I, it, I'm now the GIS person at Houston Audubon, mm -hmm. which just means I do it when we need a map made or when we need some mm -hmm. kind of analysis done. Mm -hmm. um, it's frustrating if you don't use it a lot because <laughs> it always updates and you kind of forget the. But if you at least have that um, baseline, uh, employers mm -hmm. love it. It'll make you kind of enjoy doing that kind of thing more, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a very, very useful tool for going forward in any kind of science field. It's widely applicable to yep. 
public and private and nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I'm getting this right, GIS is fun, is fun in the actual work 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 field. Mm -hmm. It's just getting getting the education for for it is a is a pain. Yes, extremely correct. <laughs> so. It's like math or is yeah, there chemistry? Is there a way to like get opportunities to like, hey, do some GIS volunteer opportunities when you don't have that experience yet? Literally any nonprofit, if you were like, hey, I'd like to volunteer my GIS skills, would be like, oh my God, we have 47 things we need you to do. If they have the license, I mean, yeah, you, can, you can work on stuff with ArcGIS online. Mm -hmm. It's a bit limited and things are changing now with ArcGIS mm -hmm. Pro. So everyone thinks kind of up in the air. But if if you have what I helped me a lot learning it in class, it's I actually worked on an undergrad research with Dr. Amin, and we didn't really have that much of map wise, but I being able, the ones that I did, I created the map for myself. So I had the problem, I followed the steps, I gathered the data, and I set it up with the colors that I liked. Mm -hmm. And that helped me learn a lot, just doing it myself and not doing a problem. And internships, too. I learned GIS through my internship at the Parks Department. And just my, my um, boss taught me how to do it, which was really nice of her. Mm -hmm. But she just taught me the things that applied to that project. But since it was a restoration project and now I just do restoration projects, I pretty much know all the things that I would need just from that training at the internship. So um, you could learn it not in a classroom and it's, it's pleasant. <laughs> yeah, I've taken one intro to GIS cl class in Walt Hens. That was like the first, uh, I mean, to take up time. That was the first time I had to do something on my own a lot. Lots where not even like family or friends knew how to work with it as well. Yeah. As well, so that was a little frustrating. But I, I always thought, well, the end product is cool. Mm -hmm. It's cool here, and if I'm not crunched for time to get get something done done here, it's fun. Yeah. And when you try to look at textbooks for it, you're like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, mm -hmm. anyone else? Oh, after. <laughs> is there any other technical training that you need in your position? Um, is there something you wish you had taken? R. Uh, R, R. I wish uh, either of my um, degrees had taught me R. Yeah. Um, you know, universities typically have a statistical package that they use. So my first was SPSS and my last was Minitab. Uh, ask for R or seek out R training. So I'm doing it on my own time now. Yeah, I learned it, but I'll have to relearn it when I do it, because it's, but I kept my notes and stuff, because I was just like, yep, this is definitely helpful. I'm gonna have to learn this in the future. I'm keeping this now, because I don't want to relearn it. Yeah, but otherwise, I think it's it's mostly just kind of like a lot of learning on the, the job, because your mm -hmm. different positions require kind of totally different mm -hmm. skills, but I, uh, in my experience in this world, everybody's really open to working with you to train you super well um, going into things. And I think experience in, I don't know if this is a technical skill, but just research methods in general, because a lot of jobs that don't sound researchy have a research component because mm -hmm. everyone wants to know how their project is doing. Um, so I did a ton of research as an undergrad, but I never wanted to go into academia, and so it wasn't my favorite thing ever. Um, but I did it, and now I'm really glad because I can do a study um, if I need to. Sorry, I don't know. Were there any aspects of your job that you perhaps weren't expecting when you interviewed or took the job? Is that for me? And oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I've only been at the Arboretum for three months, so no huge scares <laughs> yet. <laughs> uh, I never thought I'd be doing a lot of botany work um so i'm still learning uh i guess kind of the big thing for me was going from a uh, in school and working as a research assistant being surrounded by all people your age to going to an organization where um i was like by far the youngest person um so that was kind of a a shock because uh, it's just kind of a different environment um but it ends up being you learn a lot uh 
it's, I went in expecting to, I actually was expecting to work in the field and I've just been doing entirely GIS work, which is great. It's, um, yeah, it's just been GIS work. It's really just learning on the job for me. Anything that I didn't expect, it's just, they just teach you. Can I ask another question? Yeah. Uh, this is one I just thought thought of. Have it, any of you all ha ever have to work with the work with uh, the NEPA law, National Environmental Protection Act law, and like either hear your readings or hear or paperwork? Um, not directly. You know, you kind of need to be aware of it. Um, in my job, I work more with like the migratory bird stuff mm -hmm. than I do with anything environmental protection. Um, I manage two sanctuaries, so like it, you have to kind of be aware of it, but uh, I don't work direct, yet directly with it. It's, I don't, I do the maps for the reports, mm -hmm. so. Okay. I just, so you're pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Oh, it's so nice, I don't have to write it up, it's yeah. fine. It's, um, I mean, maybe the people writing the reports do. I know there's, they providing the reports because of laws, but I don't know if it's NEPA specifically. What kind of upward mobility do you have in your positions? Good question. Uh, me? Go for it. Oh, uh, for me, actually, not that much. It's um, at SWC, if I wanted to move up, it's I would, I could take my boss's position and be a GIS manager and then be his boss's position, which is like the GIS manager of this region. But I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's a lot of people skills, people management, scheduling, keeping all the balls in the air, which isn't the direction that I want to go, really. But a cool thing that my company does is they'll do like sign, uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's where they support the scientists doing their research. So you get like paid to publish works that you're working on research wise. So it may not be necessarily mobility you know, CF, CEO kind of rising to the top sort of thing, but it would be if I wanted to expand my scientific uh, fields, then I have that ability. And if I want to take a course and stuff or like go back to get my master's in GIS, it's the company will support that. Mm -hmm. Mine's a nonprofit. Uh, you know, you go into nonprofit work kind of understanding that like you're not gonna be making the big bucks uh but you're kind of working in a in an honorable field that you love um so upward mo mobility is probably not like the the top perk of being in a nonprofit. um but like i said my um co-workers and supervisors are so supportive of uh career and educational aspirations that i have that um i feel like it's like a really great stepping stone in forward momentum so like like i said i'd like to go back and get a phd and um my current supervisor has his phd and knows the world and how to navigate it and then he didn't end up staying in academia and i don't think i want to stay in academia so he knows hopping back into kind of the nonprofit world or working in federal um organizations or something like that so uh maybe not upward mobility within kind of my very small organization but upward mobility within the, the field yeah, I have the exact same answer as that. <laughs> Our freedom is pretty small. That's but what I meant. Yeah. yeah. This job is a stepping stone to get to the next mm -hmm. thing that you want to do. Yeah, definitely. And um, I and we're learning so many skills, and mm -hmm. especially if you're working at a nonprofit, like we have such a variety of things that we do um, that you could you could participate in all of that stuff because they're really flexible and. So you can kind of build up your skill set however you want to. And just having like the amount of time in years that you've worked on restoration on your resume, that like helps a lot. But when I was working for the state, you're put in these career ladders, which is really nice. So I started out as like a two and then automatically in two years you move to a three and then you move to a four and you get a raise every time, you get more responsibilities every time. So that's a nice thing about working for the government too. Definitely. 
sorry. I, when you say working for the government, governments, do you? So who? So do you? Do you know of or have any advice on how how to get hired with the gov government versus versus private industry? Um, it's a pretty similar process, but uh, it's a little bit more formal of an application. Um, and depending on what agency you want to work for, um, the applications are just online and they can be more strict about um, certain types of experience that you have and I think connections help a little bit less because it's very automated and so it goes through a computer everything all of your experience lines go through like an algorithm that they have to where if you don't fit certain things then a human will never see your application mm -hmm. so um, it's a, it's, it is a little bit different than applying for a nonprofit. If you see a position, either federal government or state government, that you are like, man, that'd be cool, you can print out those qualifications and just work towards that too. Um, and a lot of times, like, you, like um, you can start on the lower level that requires lower um, requirements, and then you can move up way in that very low position to do the job that you do want. Uh, so I'm not sure if I can give this advice, <laughs> but it's true. So, mm. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think it's illegal, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> so like yeah, uh, lie. <laughs> it's um, lie. it's because the process is automated before anyone looks at it, and once they look at it, they'll can we just obviously not say like oh I graduated from Rice, triple major honors, whatever. Yeah. But they'll ask you questions about confidence, like how confident are you in this area of expertise? Always an expert. Yeah, I'm if not. If you've done it, you're an expert. That's I'm not the a, advice I've heard. Yeah, I'm not a confident person, mm -hmm. like, at all. But, so I would have done like twos, threes, like nope, nope, expert. I'm completely confident in everything you can do. And this was for a summer internship. So, unpaid. So, if they hadn't, like, I, if I hadn't done that, they might not have even seen, that seen it. Yeah. So, it's, I mean, for entry-wise, at least, you just got to be confident. And then, once it passes through those systems, then they look at your actual, actual qualifications and stuff. And then, you can go through the process. But it's just getting past that computer. Because if you might actually have all the qualifications, but say like, mm, you know, I'm not, I've only done this for I'm a like, month. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like a four. Yeah. Well, someone who doesn't can, since it's a computer, you just put in like, yep, five, five, yeah. five, five, and then. You're kind of a weird system. Yeah. It's kind of why I'm not doing yeah. federal at the moment, because I'm just like, Ugh. it's a pain. I got you. That's, a, that's a really challenging thing that Kelly just described there, and I want to point out, I don't she said lie. She didn't mean yeah. lie. No. Well, <laughs> she didn't mean lie. She didn't mean lie. Well, if you have the skill, confident. right? <laughs> I, I think what the point is there is that, like, you're gonna read those forms when you do like a government application. It's gonna ask you how confident you are in doing something. If you've never done something, you cannot tell them that you've right. never that you that you're 100 percent confident mm -hmm. doing it. But if you tried something and you've done it a couple of times and you felt like you've got the hang of it. You instinctively might say, well, I'm a four out of a five. Mm -hmm. But when you do that, you immediately get yourself kicked out of the pool because what the computer is doing is looking for all fives in these areas. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, I once sat with somebody who was applying for a government job. When you read it on the paper, they were so qualified for the job. You couldn't imagine another person doing that particular job. When they went through and they filled out the paperwork, there were a couple of questions where I mean, this is a person who's one of the most highly qualified person I've ever met, and they would put four in there because they, they were really giving a true mm -hmm. evaluation of how they felt. And they didn't even get called for the job. Yeah. Didn't even get like to the didn't even get to the person who was evaluating, right? And so that's one of those weird things about government jobs that you have to be aware of. Mm -hmm. um, and so you don't lie. <laughs> if you don't have the skills, you cannot say you have the skills. Yeah. Right. But overemphasize your qualifications because somebody's <laughs> going to. Mm -hmm. Okay, I feel like if that was any other situation, that'd be lying, but I agree. <laughs> <laughs> We're pretty much out of time. Does anybody have any questions left for our panelists? 
Thank y'all so much.